Welcome back to FUNYC. I'm your co-host, Eric Wickstrom. And I'm your other co-host, Emily Eden. And Emily, today we have a great pleasure about talking about um, food. Not just any food, Food Eric. in New York City. Yes, but... But, well, we'll get to it, but okay. we've talked so far, we've, we've talked... New York's got a lot of great things. We've, mm-hmm. we've dealt with stand-up comedy in New York. We've dealt with artists in New York. We've dealt with uh, fashion design in New York City. Comedians. And, right. The one area we haven't really delved into with any of our guests, which I'm super excited about today, is food. Exactly. And I think Los Angeles has a great food culture also. Yeah, but, but I think New out. York, in my opinion, in the U.S., New York has the best, most diverse food scene of all the major cities in, in the United States. I and, agree. And our, <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to you because you were you were able to, to, to wrangle our guest today, which was a great get. It's yes. a very exciting guest, and we're excited to jump and talk to him. I'll let you take it away with the introduction. So today with us, we have the amazing and really cool and incredibly talented Guy Vaknin. Not only does he have one incredible vegan restaurant in the city, how many do you have now? Seven, we have eight, nine, six six restaurants, five concepts, um, and um, and two more coming. And it's amazing, and it's all vegan. Right, this is what drew you to I'm it. I'm so excited yeah. because I know. you are a vegan. <laughs> No, yes. I am not. Yes, I but I'm like to. old school. Yeah. 14 years old. I'm wrong. a carnivore. Right. Yeah. My girlfriend very my girlfriend is super excited that you're here today, Chef. Beautiful. And, and because she is she's not a vegan, but she's yeah. very plant forward in the diet and she's really trying to impress upon me to become more plant forward. Mm-hmm. So she's greatly hoping you rub off on me today. Beautiful. And I, I mean and that that you you'll be surprised, uh, uh and this is a, a a fact that not a lot of people know. But uh, we have more than 70% of our customers are not vegan or vegetarian. And I wouldn't survive as a restaurateur at this scale if I didn't uh, direct my food at, at a wide variety of people. And yeah, Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, it's not. And I looked at your menus that. ahead of time here because yeah. I was like, let me see, because that's, that's to, to your point. I go in sometimes vegetarian or vegan restaurants yeah. and it, everything's very unappealing to yeah. me because. Are you expecting quinoa? Yeah. Well, it's just, it's, just, it's stuff that either I don't even know how to pronounce the stuff or yeah. it's, it's food, all, yeah. Like food. And it doesn't have any like call back to food I'm familiar with. Yeah. Whereas your your restaurant, and we'll get into this more, yeah. but your menus are very accessible for people like me that yeah. at least I'm eating stuff that seems familiar. That's the purpose. I mean, come on. Like the, the idea is that you come in, you eat at the restaurant, uh, you don't get deterred by the fact that it's vegan and you are very familiar with what you're looking at. It's right. not, it's a steak, it's a steak, but it's just our version of it. Um, and we use the, top products in the market or source the top products from all over the world uh, to make sure that your experience is very similar to what you would uh, have at a regular restaurant. Mm. Is it still vegan? Of course. Uh, but the idea is that you don't have drawbacks because of the food. It's just good food. Right. That's the idea. That's always the idea, right? Yeah. So you're from, mm-hmm. where are you from back. originally? So I grew up in Israel. Uh, my father and my my mom separated when I was very young. So he came here uh, and then opened restaurants. He had a bunch of Moroccan restaurants. They both came, were born in Morocco, came to Israel. Uh, and then he moved here, opened restaurants. I grew up in Israel at 22. I moved uh, I moved to New York. I thought I'm going to come and just work for a little bit and go travel the world. Uh, and I ended up staying in now. In three days, it's going to be 19 years. Wow. So half wow. my life, you know, in Israel, half my life in New York. So, so in Israel was... Was it always food, like, or was it something yeah, else? Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a combination for me. Uh, I grew up because my parents got divorced. I used to spend a lot of time with my with my family because my mom had to work two jobs. Uh, I I was brought up in a very small town, didn't have a lot, uh, so I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. Uh, she basically half the time raised me, uh, and she was a housewife. And cooking is a big, big part of the Moroccan culture. Uh, a lot of influence from the French uh, that colonized Morocco. So all the techniques uh, how and the big dinners every Friday, uh, Jewish family, yeah. every Friday we meet, uh, have this big dinners, the whole family. What kind of food uh, would you have at these big dinners? Uh, like mainly traditional Moroccan food. It has nothing to do with vegan. I'm a, I mean, I grew up... Uh, 
carnivore as carnivore can be. Right. Uh, I spent time in a kibbutz, which is a village mm-hmm. where you work the land, you you work the chicken coops, uh, you work with the with the with the cows, uh, milking the whole the whole thing. It had nothing to do with this world, and but when I came here and worked with my dad and he worked in kosher right. uh, I got introduced to this world when I opened you know my first restaurant even that wasn't vegan it was vegetarian mm. and so let's, that, not, that, let's, that, not yeah. is, let's not leave Israel let's not leave yeah. Israel so living in Israel uh, uh, growing up in a small town uh, in a kibbutz uh, at 17 uh, my mom moved to Tel Aviv uh, I stayed in the small town, lived with my girlfriend, which was fun. Yeah. <laughs> and at 17, then, yeah. At 17. And then at 18, uh, joined the IDF, uh, like every Israeli. Mm-hmm. Uh, served for three and a half years. Right. While I was in the IDF, I was a fighter. Uh, but in there, we had to cook for ourselves. So most times I would uh, take the kitchen shift and cook for— that was my first experience, cooking for more— than gotcha. uh, just my family. Uh, so I would cook with whatever they gave us and make up things. And, and of course, they loved it because when I was in the kitchen, they'll get nice dinners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It, it kept me off from gardening and doing all that stuff. So right. that, was, that was a good excuse for me. Yeah. Um, and then once I got released, came here, worked with my dad. My dad had six restaurants in the city. Oh, wow. In 2005, I came here. Uh, so when you get released, though, is that you've decided at that point, because is, is from that experience, from cooking for the troops, is that where you decide, I want to go and be a chef also? No. Or you just want to come to America and no. this is where you can work with your dad? And- no, I, 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 I loved food. I had I, At that point, I didn't even think that I'm going to get into this world. Uh, I loved food. I, I knew my dad was in it for business, not necessarily for the food part. Mm-hmm. Um I knew I loved food. Every memory that I have from any age uh, is related to food somehow. I don't know why, but I can remember food and and the memories themselves. They have to have that component for me to remember as a, a three-year-old or a four-year-old eating something that reminds me of something. Um, so I loved food. But, of course, my mom, my dad didn't want me to go cook. Uh, when I when I went to college here, when I first got here, uh, I went for computer engineering okay. and did that for three months. <laughs> uh, and went back and said, listen, guys, I, I can't sit in the class. Yeah. Uh, I just got released from the Army. I was like a ball of energy. Right. Um, and I mentioned to my dad that I want to go one day to culinary school. So he sent me to culinary school, hoping that I would like it and take over the business. Yeah. That was his plan. And where did you go to culinary school? I went in the city. Okay. Uh, just seven months. Uh, I I love the experience, but culinary school is not where you learn. Yeah. Uh, I believe that everything that you do learn is experience and what you teach yourself. And Absolutely. trial and error. So... As soon as I got out of the school, my dad said, okay, you're the executive chef. I was 23. Wow. And not only that, I'm leaving for a year and a half, <laughs> run the business. Uh, and it's 2000 and the end of 2008. Um, the economy is crashing. Everything is right, happening right at once. The deep end. Yeah, wow. he's like, go. And, and where was the luck. restaurant? Where was at that thing? point, he condensed everything to catering. So we, I used to be the executive chef for the catering and I ran the company. Um, and I took that as a, as a platform. You know, a lot of times— and This is vegetarian. This is no. This is, was all carnivore. Oh, this right? is Everything, all still carnivore. Yeah, all carnivore, oh, just kosher. Oh, kosher. Kosher, 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 kosher catering. Carnivore. Yeah. So a, a lot of times when you get an opportunity, especially when it's given to you like that, yeah. um, uh, a lot of kids that have their— you know, dad's business, we'll take advantage of it. I really took it as a platform. He barely paid me. Yeah. <laughs> but it, for me, it was a platform to learn. So I lost him a bunch of money uh, in the beginning. Right. But I transformed, and I, I admit to it, but I transformed the company from a company that was serving, like, mainly, like, sandwiches, lunches. It was right here on 49th Street between 2nd and 3rd. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, so, so the same. Wow. Two We're seconds. Close. Yeah. yeah. So, um... So I took that and I took it. I took advantage of it. I'm basically, learning 
the basics of how to manage people outside the army. Because right. it was very easy for me to give commands. Um, you learn that in the real world, you yeah. can't just command people to do things, and they would do it. Um, so especially New Yorkers, espe- especially <laughs> New Yorkers, yes. Yeah. Uh, but I was very, you know, I was very, uh, I was very uh, seasoned in terms. Is that of, the biggest lesson you learned? Is is people, or was there? It was a food. Like, what was the biggest lesson you took from I, that? Time? I think that that time. It's both, uh, mainly how to deal with people, right? Because uh, I was 22. Now I have uh, employees that are 45, yeah. and 50, and 60, and now they need to listen to that little kid that his daddy gave him the business, right? How do you do that? How do you learn how to uh, manage people? At the beginning, it was a lot of uh, a lot of intensity, yeah. uh, but then you learn that that doesn't work, and sometimes it does, and yeah. I still use it sometimes, uh, but. Most times you want people to understand what you want, be with you, be on the same page with you, and drive drive home whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Right. Um, but it took me many, many, many years and a lot of white hair, as you can see. Yeah, <laughs> I got the same. Uh, uh, and, and, and over the time, I transformed the company, and I quadrupled it in size. So he had, uh, instead of serving this uh, low point, price point, uh, sandwiches and whatever not, right. we moved along to fancier stuff that we did for weddings and full on. And then for the same, because the ingredients at the end, they're all the same. So right. much love and care and passion and how you put them on a plate that the customer in front of you uh, will value your work and pay for it, right? Right. Mm. Uh, a lot of it. There is ingredients cost, but a lot of it is that. Yeah. Um, and... As long as you put that in there, people will pay you the value that you put into it, Absolutely. right? Uh, so I had to transform the company and transform the people, the way their approach to the food and how to make it so we can drive it to a place. So we quadruple the size of the company in terms of income, but not in terms of labor, not in terms of space, right. not in terms of all that. And the business aspect of it, I so learned. Working smarter. Yeah. And I learned over there, this is food, business, people. Uh, and it's always been that. Right. And that's where I learned. That, that was my first platform. And then father and son don't go along so together. So that comes back. Yeah, okay. that he comes back. He left, you quadrupled <laughs> yeah. it, he came back. Came back, and enjoyed, he's got enjoyed the profits. Uh, so yeah. he doesn't just come back and say, hey, you're doing a great job. I'm going to go stand no, over there and walk. No, he, he came in. Back in. I want to do it this way. You uh, know? Okay. So I uh, fast forward a few years, uh, 2011. Uh, it's not working out anymore. Right. Um, 2011, I hire uh, a girl also to the company that becomes my wife. Uh. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then in 2012, I decide that um, that's it. I don't want this business. I also didn't like the dynamics with the whole kosher restrictions and all that stuff. Uh and decided to go in and follow something that I tried out in the catering company, which was a vegetarian sushi. Right. Uh, when you say kosher and, restrictions, yeah. it's ingredients, so, but there's other things involved. There right? is other things. So there is levels of kosher, right? I'm kosher. My restaurants are kosher. But right. there is a level of how how kosher. It isn't what certain people will come in right. uh, and so on. This was glatt kosher. So you can't. Go into the fridges without the rabbi. You can turn the fire on without the rabbi. You can you can do a million things without them, right? right. Uh, so when you need a rabbi, do you like? Is he's a, always there. He's always he's there. an employee. He's oh, a, he's a okay. staff. And, he's a staff. staff wow. rabbi. So the, no, all no. those restrictions uh, really really bothered me as a, as a chef. I just want to drive home the mission. Want to right? cook? Yeah, yeah. I want to cook. Yeah. I want to do my thing. I can't you know wait for anybody. Right. Uh, and I go at. 400. Yeah, chef. You, can, you can't go at 100 with me, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you've never, so if I'm understanding this, so you're leaving the catering now, you and your dad, you yeah. butt heads, you're going to go do your own thing, you're open yeah. your own restaurant. Yeah. So you never really worked on anyone else's lines coming no. up? No. You just oh, jumped wow. in? Jumped in. I, the only person I worked under, uh, which was uh, an episode in uh, 2000, it started in 2008. I got invited for casting. Uh, for uh, Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. In 2008, season eight, I did the casting. They flew me out to California. We did the whole thing. I didn't get in. Okay. A year later, they called me, we want you to come back. Uh, And then I did get in. Uh, So the only person that I worked under besides uh, working for my dad uh, 
was Gordon Ramsay. Me too. Me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. I mean, and that's yeah. what's funny. He taught me. So with the episode I had to do, and I was vegan at the time, much to the production crew's distress, they were like, you sure oh, you wow. want to do this? I literally had to like stuff a chicken with him and like break the chicken <laughs> thighs. And he just loved it. He found it hysterical that yeah. he had this, you know. He's, he's turning was, around though. Like, yeah. He's he, turning around. He is. He's turning around. He is turning around. Like I yeah. remember having a conversation with him in his dressing room and being like, oh, I'm actually vegan. And he was like, oh, you're not like for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like <laughs> now it's like he's got a vegan beat Wellington or oh, something yeah. on his menu. Yeah, he's like, got a, he's, like he's definitely come a lot. Because I watch Hell's Kitchen. I'm a yeah. fan. I, I'm in, uh, it's, he's definitely a little less hostile towards vegan. I wasn't. Point. I wasn't when I went in. There. How long did you last on? Uh, seven episodes. I definitely oh, wow. saw it. I don't remember. Yeah. It's yeah, so yeah, long yeah. now. So it, it was seven, a, that's a good run. Yeah. I took, I take cooking and food. It's like my religion. Right. Okay? I don't, uh, I, I'm a. I'm not a good Jew. <laughs> I believe in food, right? Yeah. So that's all I do all day. I dream about it. I, I I study, and when I went there, I took it very seriously. It's a reality show, right? You gotta you gotta be part of the drama. Now, uh, I think some of the problem people have that go on that are vegans or vegetarians is that they they have no experience with meat, yeah, cooking, and you didn't have that, so you and I wasn't and I wasn't vegan or vegetarian back then, two thousand and ten. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, this, this is before oh, Beyond okay. Sushi yeah. ever happened. So I thought, but you went in two thousand, you leave catering in two thousand twelve, yeah, to open the restaurant. Now, that restaurant wasn't. That's still carnivore. Just no, push, no vegetarian. That's what I'm, so that's so. Yeah, but that the Hell's Kitchen happened in 2010. So two uh, years prior, mm, okay. two okay, years so prior, I, I filmed it. Gotcha. And then it it got aired in the beginning of 2012. Oh, that's maybe that's where yeah. I'm getting. So we feel they filmed two. They filmed two uh, two seasons at a time. Oh, okay. So the season before me, and then I I I went on. I gotcha. Uh, but bottom line. I did whatever I did there. I was young. I never worked under anybody. I learned most of my cooking on the line, cooking myself, right. struggling. Uh, would I have been better at that time if I had guidance? Probably. Right. Uh, was I at, uh, at the level to be on a cooking show? I don't think so. I served them fish with chocolate for my for my main dish, for like really? my first dish. Like a mole sauce? Or yeah, just, something uh, like that. Okay, okay. But, but, and, and, and I... I sold it in the catering many, many times for a lot of money. Yeah. And it was a dish that it, it, it went over. Uh -huh. Would I serve it today? I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, was, I, was, I was young and I was trying to do things that, you know, nobody did. I remember that. Okay. Good. I do. He, I like, spit it out. Yeah, I remember yeah, he the, spit it out. Yeah. I did well after that in cooking and everything else. Did I take my creativity uh, a little bit too far? Yes. But that's when you're young and you don't have that guidance and right. you're not in the box. But Beyond Sushi also came out of that, yeah. right? The creativity, mm -hmm. the, the fact that nobody told me, hey, or people told me, what? Yeah. Sushi with just vegetables, that's going to work? And I said, you know what? Let me show you. Um, so maybe, in a weird way, experience on the line, experiencing working in kitchens, it may have been a hindrance Oh yeah, for you. Uh, for me, for, for creativity, I think it is. Right. Because mm -hmm. when you work with chefs, they, they tend to put on you what they think is right, right. or what, what they think is the right way to do things. Uh, I think that figuring it out, as long as you're driven enough, you have a resolve in you, uh, you can learn how to do everything and sometimes in a better way than other people because they are boxed into this thing that they're told to do. And it's it, it, it goes throughout life. I mean, even careers or yeah, yeah. whatever you do in life, yeah. you're boxed. Okay, you got to go this, you got to do college, you got to go to find a job, you got to do that. Um, I try to stay out of it. I try yeah. to go my way uh, it, and listen to my gut as much as I can. Uh, and I did with, with Beyond Sushi. And I knew that, hey, if I check out my ego and I listen to my customers at every every level of this company, right. I can be successful. I mean, I can, I can hear and I have a good gauge and I check. Like, I, I'll check what people right. say all the time. So when did you open Beyond Sushi? July 2012 was my first location. It was a hole in the wall. Uh, I put all the money that I had, and I had one employee. <laughs> and, and was this the one on the Upper East Side? No, no, was, no, 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 no. Oh, Four, wow. Upper East Side was the last one. Uh, uh, 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd. There's one employee. This wasn't your wife. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> my wife had to still work at my dad's company okay. to pay rent for the first few months until I hired her mm. to the Beyond Sushi. I hired her, and she right. became like 
you know, she does. And so was it vegetarian yeah. or are we talking about a different It was vegetarian. No, no, it was vegetarian when That's I opened it. for three weeks. Mm. Remember, I told you, I listened to my customers. Right. They said, hey, hey, everything is almost vegan. Can you make it vegan? It would be a lot easier for us. But why, had, why did we go to a vegetarian concept? To begin with? Point? Yeah. So in the catering, I used to make a black rice uh, vegetable sushi in my sushi station because some Jewish people cannot have fish and meat like right after. They have to okay. wait. Okay. Some sporadic, like, so I had to have a vegetarian option for them. So I made this and people reacted to it like, whoa, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and then we took it and we took it to the vegetarian food festival and I ran out. And then the second year I made quadruple what I made in terms of preparation and I ran out and everybody was like, when are you opening? When are we going to have this? I didn't do much research. I said, okay, <laughs> let's open because this is the time. Yeah. And I, I, I figured, you know, I'll figure it out. And, and there was a lot of a lot of hardship in the beginning, but three I mean, months. Also, yeah. there wasn't much of a vegan scene in New York. No. There was like, was Pure Food and Wine open by then, I think? Yes, they just opened. And then what was the place? There was a Angelica's raw kitchen. vegan place, Angelica's, Angelica's kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. But there was another one close to, their, to, close to the Turkish baths that was pure. It was like raw, raw. It was all raw food. And I can't remember. It was I don't around remember. East 11th Street. I don't remember. And area. I wasn't involved in the scene. Right, like, I right, didn't know. Right. I was ignorant. Uh, okay. I was I was crashed completely crashed the party. Crashed yeah. the party. No, yeah. no, no. But I, and I came I came to it from a different. You know, I came from it. Hey, this is working. Let's make it work. Did you, you know? run? Did you run into like you're saying like when you train with chefs and they have their rules and their traditions yeah. and the respect for ingredients? Yeah. All that stuff that you hear all the time yeah. it, it limits you and kind of puts you in a box creatively. Yeah. Did you start hearing the same stuff from from vegans and vegetarians? Like you can't put this with that or traditions of the ingredients, respect the, any of that kind of stuff? Um, no, but I, I picked up on that on that aspect. I picked up from just studying, right. you know, studying other chefs, working with even the short stint that I had with Gordon Ramsay. The amount of discipline, the amount of respect for everything that he does, and mm-hmm. I studied him afterwards, right. mm-hmm. uh, really gave me insight to how, maybe too much, because I became like too rough a little yeah. bit afterwards. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but, and again, this all a tribute to my young age back then. Uh, but I learned from that a lot. And the respect to what we do, the respect to food, the respect to the ingredients, the respect to every piece of it, that there's no waste, right. mm-hmm. is extremely important to me. I, I, up until this today, you know? Right. So that culture of vegetarian, vegan, that no. was in New York that you didn't... They didn't. They didn't. They get were it. just like, cool, go do your thing. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they just, they commented on the fact that I used egg products, right? Because mm-hmm. I it was vegetarian. In right. the beginning, I didn't. I literally didn't know the difference, right? Right. Because I'm a carnivore. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? This is 2012. Right. But then I saw their support, and I saw how much they came. And I had an incident where a girl didn't read that it's it has egg products, uh. and she ate it. She ate the egg products, and she started like bawling in the restaurant because <laughs> oh, no, really. for eight years she never had any. It any, wasn't any, me. Any, it no, wasn't it me. wasn't you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like something you would do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it kind of hurt me, and I said, you know what? I need to find a solution to this. The easiest way is to make it all vegan. I came from a place where it's all kosher, so I can do it all vegan. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used to see it. I used to say, okay, there is the restriction, but for me it's a challenge. Let's figure out how we can do it. So at this point it's still... Are you still a carnivore at this point, privately? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Was it just to stand out, do something different, that what there wasn't a kind of like fill a hole yeah. vegetarian? Yeah, I, then, mean, I mean, I didn't think about it too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> okay. I was like, I, okay, this is working. Let's I see a it. theme going here. Yeah, yeah let's do jumping it. Jumping in and swimming. Jump, jump and swim. And yeah. uh, so, so it wasn't... A lot of people come to, to vegetarian, being a vegetarian or veganism. Oh, yeah, from like... Yeah, from, from like a deep rooted. No, not at all. Love of the earth or love of the animals. Not at all, but 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 it gives me an advantage, too, because I could look at it from a different perspective. Forget I changed, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, six months into it, I, I've been vegan for 11 years. My yeah. whole family, my kids, whatever. Uh, but it took a learning curve. Like, everything for me is like, okay, we, we learn. And I, I'm not ignorant anymore about it. Now I know what, why it's happening. And from a standpoint that I'm leading the company, I'm cooking. Usually what I cook for myself is what I'm going to serve. Right. So if I, if I have everything available at my, you know, at my disposal, I'm never going to create anything. Right. right. Never going to advance that creation. Um, so it came from there. 
and I decided, okay, uh, to change. Um, but it gave me an advantage because I didn't look at cooking the way all of them did. Right. I wanted in the beginning to keep it pure. So for the first eight years, Beyond Sushi was made from vegetables, fruits, legumes, and grains. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll explain why it changed after that. Yeah. Uh, but that was the People story. like Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, the, the, oh, we'll get that. So six the months majority. In, I find I find this fascinating yeah. because yeah. it's such a it's such a different story than you normally yeah. hear. Yeah, are driven for different. So six months in, you decided to go vegan for for to try it out. To try it out, stuck. Wasn't it more creative, uh, fulfilling? To more be like, to be vegan myself. To make vegan food, oh, yeah. isn't that more like creative than? It is, and 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 it, because I was, you know, in that constraint. Um, I had to. I mean, there is no. Forget about it. That it's good. It was good for me. It was good for for the environment. It was good for the business. It was good. For, but I had to. There is no way I'm leading something I don't believe in. Right. right. So I had to, and it became my life. You know. Yeah. Uh, and it's okay. You in, the, in the beginning, yeah. Did you did you enjoy it? In the beginning, I did not. I missed. I missed. I right. missed whatever whatever I was in. But over time, if you ask me today to, like you said, break the leg, I can't. Yeah. Like, I can't. Yeah. And you, this is coming from someone that worked in in a in a farm, right? And cut chickens head off with my hands, right? Oh right. Uh, it's not. But I know the other side of it. Like I always say yeah. to, to people that are saying, "Oh yeah, you know, you're vegan, whatever." Okay, go kill a cow and mm-hmm. sh- tell me after that how many times a day you're gonna do that. Right. How, how, like, that's something I think about a lot, too. If people were forced to do that, yeah. this is like the old, uh, the, the old West, the old frontier, when you had to go yep. out to the, and yep. grab a chicken and, and break yep. its neck. I mean, and, that's why I became it. vegan, is that because my nan had a farm. Yeah. And, um, she, you know, in the daytime, I would be playing with Lucinda the cow. Right. And then we would have a Sunday roast dinner and it would be beef. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you're eating Lucinda. And then I would yeah, just be Yeah, but atta- it's attached. Look. You know, like. Yeah. You 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 bringing a good point. It's attached, and you brought a good point. It's attached to. Look backwards. How many times would you eat meat on special occasions, on uh, on holidays, on stuff like that? Right. And the reasoning for that is that you had to go to the backyard, and slice something's throat. Off. Right. And it's never a good feeling. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, how many times you've done it. Killing is no good. You right. know, it's just a, in, mm-hmm. it's something inside of us that is like, it doesn't feel good. Right. right? So when you start eating uh, vegan, is it, is it kind of like, for me, I've tried vegetarian yeah. before. I gained weight because okay. I just ate nothing but pasta for a yeah. year and I got, you know, much heavier. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't crack the code on it. But I, I feel like there's certain foods, it's almost like as a culture, we're addicted yeah. to meat. We're addicted to processed foods and everything. No. So. I don't know if it's like quitting smoking. Like, like I smoked for years. Yeah. Now I couldn't even want to smoke a cigarette yeah. ever. Yeah. Is meat? Is does it take as you further you get away from it? Does it become easier? Would you say? Uh, I think that I you think just so. yeah. Yeah. You get you get into the habit that that doesn't appeal to you. Yeah. Uh, just like cigarettes won't yeah. appeal to you. The smell of them. I mean. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that. So is it that, is it that just, level? If you're yeah. walking down the street and you smell like burgers cooking. Oh no! Because now I cook. Now I cook uh, a lot of products that would fool the best of the best. Okay, so it's not mm-hmm. smells. It's, it's not smells. It's none of that. I mean, g- grilling, and always like makes me hungry. Not, right. Not the opposite way around. Do I want to grill? Uh, Ultra processed uh, meat that came from a factory? No. Right. Uh, there is there is alternatives that I think are better. Right. Uh, and in terms of ingredients and in terms of the nutritional value, are better. Um, and I can explain. And people, you know, people uh, down on a lot of these products that come to market, mm-hmm. um, but then don't take into calculation all the other things that go into beef. Or into fish, or into right. the antibiotics, the the pollution that they eat, and all that other stuff. So, do you buy the argument? Because that's I hear this one a lot too. Like commercial farming yeah. at the level we do it in this country yeah. and all throughout the world, the amount of yeah. cows that we kill a year to process and everything. Do you do you really buy the idea that like naturally raised beef is somehow better? Like uh, like far like I, sustainable I, farm? I don't buy I don't buy the argument. I I think it's. It's a hundred percent right. You do, yeah. yeah. Uh, do Me too. do I uh, 
do I want to promote it? No, I promote complete, you know, veganism, mm-hmm. but not in a not in a forcing way, right? right? So I'll show you that you can eat in my restaurant, enjoy, have a good time. I don't care if you do it every day. I don't care if you do it once a week. I don't right. care if you do it once a month. At least I did that. I mean, and and I would like to do it at scale, right? So last Saturday we served fifteen hundred people for the day, right? right? One day serving fifteen hundred meals. I know for a fact seventy five to eighty percent of them are not vegan or vegetarian. Right. So for me that's a big accomplishment, right? Uh, you're gonna eat it every day, vegan? Uh, not my concern. I live, live. Yeah. You live. I live. You come. You want to enjoy my food? Great. Uh, you want to try it out? It was good for you. Come back. You know, right. go to the other one. Whatever. Uh, but that's my approach to it. I think a lot of the argument people have against trying to be vegetarian or, or vegan is the cost, right? So it's yeah. expensive to eat healthy. Is what everybody says. Now, yeah. I don't buy that. I think if you if you try a little harder, you could probably figure out a way to do it. But what would your what would you tell people that they'd say? I can't be a vegan. I can't be vegetarian. It's too expensive. Uh, I, come on. Uh, meat, meat is much more expensive. I work with a few companies that are very innovative, creating the, mm-hmm. the top, like I invested, I'm an advisor uh, to two of them. Uh, one is a steak company, uh, the other one makes salmon. Uh, and my biggest argument with them is that we need to get to a point where our product, the raw product is cheaper than actual meat. And that's when we are right. gonna capture the biggest market, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is slightly more expensive. It is because they're all new and scale is something that takes time. Right. Uh, but I believe that over time, uh, a pound of soy is a fraction of whatever meat that you're going to get with the subsidies that the government pays for it. Right. right. So eventually we're going to get to the stage where that product is cheaper, more accessible. You can't tell the difference. We don't need to clone things. We don't need to 3D print it. Right. We just got to get innovative with the, with, the, with the production of it. That state company that I'm working with is an exa- a great example of it. 25 grams of protein in a four-ounce piece. You get all the nutrition. It's all in seven ingredients. No binders, no glues, no none of that right. stuff. It's all from fermentation. Amazing stuff. How's the texture? Texture, we're working. It's, it's more like a... I would say like a brisket. Okay. All right. But it's you try it. I promise you, you you'll be like blown away. And that's that's yeah. Called, that's the stuff called chunk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so always I, my hang up. With, you know, people say, oh, it tastes the same, and, and the texture is always a little. So this little one, it, and and again, this is only two years old. Right. Uh, this is like you know, it's like every product. Yeah. Uh, and the iPhone took a few years to. Uh, but also, Eric, you know, like there's certain meats that only people like. Not not all meat eaters like every single meat and every of course, single yeah. fish oh, because yeah. of different textures, and yeah. that's the same for all the different alternatives out there. No, I'm just saying, playing not playing double because I I do eat like my my girlfriend now. She yeah. always a salad, always like plan forward in the meals that we plan, and we're definitely eating leaner stuff and less a lot less beef than I yeah. used to eat for sure. But that's always been I've I've tried and I would love if I could find a beef alternative that was plant based. That, there, there will be. Yeah. I mean, they're coming uh, and they're coming and they're getting better and they're getting cleaner uh, yeah. and they're getting uh, more organic. Uh, it's just it's just time. And I can tell you, I could I've seen the progress over the years. The part of the reason I wouldn't touch any of these products when I first started right. is they were they tasted like plastic. Yeah. No, no, you know, no, right. mm-hmm. you can't lie about it. Tastes like plastic, didn't taste good. But since there was a push in that in that direction, yes, they created uh, things that are much, much better. Right. Uh, for me, now I look at it, it opened the whole world for me. Because now I look at it, and that's my, that's my cow, that's my chicken, mm-hmm. that's my, and I am not limited in what I can make. Yes, right. I'm limited a little bit. I even have, like, sunny side eggs and poached eggs and and uh, scrambled eggs and anything that you can imagine as long as you get the good products and you treat them with the same respect that you right. would treat anything else you can come out with a good product now i had some haters say oh well he's just good cooking uh, impossible right no i don't use that as is ever right like, all these products get a twist on and i do what a chef does yeah take products and create dishes that's all I do. I don't need to 
you know, be the God and make the steak itself. Right. I got a company that does that, right? Right. Uh, it's an ingredient. Yeah, it's an ingredient. an ingredient. That's, that, that's all it is at the end of the day. And I look at, at my cooking today that way. Right? So, so as far as cost, you think as these things become better and yeah. people enjoy them better? Yep. They'll purchase more and let's supply and demand that will even out. hundred percent. hundred percent. Right uh, now, it's it's kind of one-to-one. Like the Beyond Meat and yeah. the Chopped Meat. Yeah. I mean, it's probably cheaper. It's, it's disgusting. It's, it's you know, the cheap chopped yeah. meat that people buy. I'd rather buy the Beyond mm-hmm. and, and eat that. But Yeah. So, I like Impossible better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Well, the other people's thing that people argue a lot of times with becoming vegan or vegetarian is is protein. Not people yeah. get a protein, calcium. Yeah. So people listening that that have concerns about that, like what are some tricks you can knock on wood? Uh, I've been vegan that. for eleven years. Knock on wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can ask my. Uh, I've never felt stronger. I knock on wood. I don't get sick. Yeah. I I don't miss work. I you know I'm high on energy all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I eat, I eat whatever. I right. Mean, I don't like think about what I eat. I eat whatever. Right. Whatever is in front of me, whatever restaurant I'm in, I make sure that I eat. My body tells me, okay, we need uh, more protein. So right. I'll, I'll grab whatever it yeah. is. Uh, I make sure that I eat my vegetables. I don't eat just the substitutes and stuff like that. Right. Uh, I crave those things. I don't know. I feel like so food what's a good, is like a from crave. Realistic, what's a good calcium alternative? So you're not getting it from milk. You're not using milk in the cooking. Spinach. There you go. Spinach? Yeah. Broccoli. Um, anything green. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, in, in protein, I mean, tofu. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, legumes, chickpeas, nuts. Yeah, nuts. Uh, and, I mean, if you have a good breakfast, you get some oats and nuts and just make yourself a granola, whatever it is. Yeah. That's it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do science in right. my food. It's my religion. I mm-hmm. just eat. Right. And I've never, I, I go, I should go more. Go once a year to the doctor. Doctor checks, says everything is okay. Good luck. And that's it. I move on. Oh, clearly eating vegetarian is linked to better heart. heart yeah, but there are also like better. certain combinations of foods. So I used to CrossFit with a vegan CrossFitter right. that was yeah. professional and she was jacked. And like, so I don't have a lot of muscle because I'm like you. I eat food what yeah. I love. Like I don't necessarily do the combination. I also don't work of... out. <laughs> I mean, and the people listening, not, not watching, uh, he's very yeah. lean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's very I try. Lean. I try. I always lose weight when I open restaurants. So I just lost 10 pounds. Oh, really? Well, it's stressful, wow. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so vitamin B12 is the other one that people complain about. Yeah. So uh, Mom, for I... that, Marmite. <laughs> That's what we have in England. Seriously. It's, fun. it's funny. I use Marmite. I use Marmite in all my I, I, I use Marmite. It's, uh, I use it for like... Uh, stock? For, for stock. That's yes, me that's too. It. I, I need it. to get a job. I use it in my onion, onion my onion soup. My onion, like mm-hmm. French onion soup. Yeah, mm-hmm. me I too. use the Marmite so I get that I use that it in spaghetti flavor. bolognese and my shepherd's pie. Oh, nice. that I And I make gravy out of it. Yeah? Yeah. So I make stock. I use it in a lot of things. Uh, but spirulina... Mm-hmm. Very high on uh, on B12. Uh, mix it in your shakes, mix it in, in anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people don't like it, but um, that's what I use. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, one spoon, that's mm-hmm. it. What does it do? I do cachava. I put a spoon of spirulina inside. Now, that's for it. folks that are interested in eating vegan and vegetarian, then we want to get into all the different restaurants. Yeah, 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 because yeah, so that's yeah. what I'm dying to get. Would you, I think, I think a lot of people jump in. Yeah, they just dive in. They go, all right, I'm going to be vegan or I'm vegetarian, yeah. and they fail because it's it's not easy. They got to come to my restaurant. Right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, is it? A, would you you would kind of just dove in after you you were doing it for a while? Yeah, right? I do. I do. I do all in or not. Right, that's, that's the mentality. But right? for, for other people that for other people, try start to slowly. Week? Yeah, you start slowly. You take it. Uh, you take it. If, if I don't, I don't like restrictions. Right, right. Uh, but for me. You know, it just came natural. I'm trying it. Okay, it's good for me. I feel good. Uh, I have energy. This it, it aligns with everything that I'm doing. I just stuck to it. Right. For another person, you do it today, you do it tomorrow, you enjoy it. Uh, you get exposed to different foods, more vegetables, more greens, more nuts, yeah. more everything that that is going to do good for you. At the end of the day, it's not like you're battling. It's going to do good for you. Right. Uh, if you eat meat, you eat meat. But at least try. What about for folks that I think the, the other naysayers would say it's it's cheaper to eat bad. It is. It's, it's cheaper it is. to walk into, into a fast food restaurant, grab a burger and fries and, and a it, Coke. It is and because of scale. Right. Because of scale. Scale. So everything in the, in food, in the food industry is scale. Even right. in my restaurants. Um, 
the more I open, the more employees I have, the, the easier management so becomes. We're gonna I get can sit that. here with you. Right. Yeah. We're going to get into that. So, like, your restaurants are, are fine dining. They're, I mean, they're yeah, elevated full, dining. Full, full, full sit down. Right. You know. So, but it's going to, you're going to go and you're gonna, it's going to cost you some money to go and sit yeah. down. It's worth it, obviously. It's a tremendous yeah. experience, great meal. Yeah. But do you ever see, an, do you ever envision in the future? Maybe fast food? Is, yeah, like a fast food. That's where I vegan. started. That's where I started. So, Beyond Sushi before it was not, it was a pit, uh, like a grab and go. Right. Right. Um, and I had Chelsea Market, I had Pine Street, I had one, I had in Mulberry Street. They're all small. Mm -hmm. They were mainly on the to-go part. I still have one small one on 56th Street. Um, but for me as an entrepreneur, as an owner, uh, I've always gravitated to making everything fine. Right. right? Uh, and in a fast, fast casual or a fast like grab and go. It, it's too hard, right? right. So, so, so you put so much attention into it, it doesn't show up in the price. It shows up in the labor. Right. Uh, so I, I said, and this is like after the rebirth of the company th during COVID, I said, okay, that's enough. We're switching gears. We're doing what I know how to do best, and mm -hmm. that's what we're going to do. Uh, but there is fast. They just, they, they don't, it's hard. It's hard to produce good food in fast food setting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you're not wild, like wowing the guest, if it's not like a show, if it's not, what's the reason to go get vegan? I can get a dollar burger. Right? right. right. So what? So because it says vegan on it, I'm not going to get this. Right. Uh, and it's not necessarily healthier because at the end of the day, all it is is the same thing, same sauces, same fat, same. Yeah. So what are you actually doing? Um, I think over time, with scale, prices go down. They'll be a lot more viable. You can pay eighteen dollars a four inch burger, yeah, uh, and and be satisfied afterwards, right? Right. Uh, yeah, no, that's and I think also being in New York City or being in a major city, we have these options. Yeah, I can go eat vegan Tuesday, I can go eat this on yeah. Wednesday, and come back yeah. to vegan on Thursday. For, frankly, a lot of most of the flyover states, yeah. there's no vegan. You're not going to go down yeah. and get it's any vegan or vegetarian. Off menu. I just came back from Charleston, and I always had to be like, "Do you have the off menu vegan <laughs> yeah. meal for me?" In Charleston, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I, I guess it goes back to what you're saying. You don't. You're not going to worry about what other people. You can only do what you do, and people yeah. Can I mean, lives. it's progressing. I, I, I think that we are at the forefront here right. uh, in terms of like innovating and uh, trying to create new things for the community and for, for people to approach it differently. Um, but it, it, it takes scale. What do you like? Do you enjoy more people saying, wow, I enjoy that for being vegan or vegetarian? Is that kind of like what you want? Or no. do you enjoy like tricking people's palates? I am. You enjoy I do. Enjoy I want you to come in go out and not know that you ate in a vegan restaurant. That's, that's and that cool. happened. Yeah. And that happened many times. Yeah. That people that walked in, because I don't label it. You know, I looked at your menu for, uh, I don't siete, label am I saying siete? Yeah. Siete. Siete. Yeah. yeah. It says chicken. It says beef. And I was it says like, carne asada. So, it says so I'm everything. doing the research for this, and I was like, wait, this guy's not. What is Emily talking about? He's not a vegan <laughs> chef. This is chicken and beef. This, I'm going to this restaurant. Go on the Instagram now, now people, people would say, oh, that's deceiving. Listen. It says right up top, it's a vegan, vegan kosher restaurant. restaurant. That's so. right. So, so, but for me, the whole experience is is to wow you that this is possible. Right. Don't don't prejudge. Oh, I'm going to. Oh, this is vegan. Come try it out. See what what it's all about, and you'll see. I mean, it's possible. It tastes great. I have a meatball filled with a yolk inside. Come yeah. on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like uh, you can make anything that that you can think of. Oh, the menus are super interesting. Super, and it looks. I get all the stuff on the menu. Stuff you recognize. Yeah. It's all. Oh, yeah. I've had that. I've had exactly. That. Just not with these exact ingredients. And all I need is one of your group to be vegetarian or vegan to right. bring all of you. Right. And for all you to come back afterwards. And that's the whole point. I'm not a vegetarian or vegan, but I'm interested, and I'm going to be coming in. My group, we're not, neither one of us eat vegetarian or vegan, Good. but we definitely want to be eating more plant-forward. Yep. And uh, and so that's something I think a lot of people are interested in, eating more plant-forward. And they mm -hmm. just, for the things I brought up, a lot of this, a lot of devil's advocate stuff. It's too expensive. Yeah. It's hard to find. Blah, yeah. blah. It doesn't taste right. The, the textures, but, but as we're you're We're not doing, cheap. Right. We're not cheap, but but at the end of the day, uh, I make sure that you get the value that right. you pay for. Uh, across everything that we do. All the breads made in house. All the pasta. I don't buy a sandwich bread. I make all the breads. Yeah. Uh, all the pasta made in house. Like every other restaurant that would do it at the highest level, I don't. I don't give any discounts to my team. Right. In terms of quality, uh, all the tortillas, all 
everything that we can and makes sense right. and is essential and the base of the of cooking, we take it to the highest level. Yeah. And over time, we improve more and more and more and more. Even but I some of the out, products. You're in line with the pricing. Like when you're saying we're not yeah. cheap, but you're not expensive either. No, no. no. You're in line. So instead of going, I would recommend the people, instead of going to that Mexican restaurant that serves nothing but meat, yeah. come try your Mexican restaurant, which has plan. It's the same, to your point, it's going to be the same experience, yep. same quality, same everything, but you're actually be something eating healthier and you might actually wind up. Uh, I, would, I would argue that you, uh, you'll get a lot more passion and on the plate and from the service because they're also they're part of the mission right, right. uh the team is the most important thing right? yes uh for me and for every business but it's very hard to get in a regular restaurant people to buy into the mission of what we do right and how we do as hard as the team that i have they're right. extraordinary and they do a great job and i don't do this alone we're 250 Right. It's a big, big team. Yeah. And everybody's pushing in that direction. So. But also you've changed vegan restaurants and vegan dining in itself. So one of the hard times I used to have taking people to vegan restaurants yeah. who weren't vegan, like my now husband, for example, would be like, oh, I don't want to go back to that hippie place and yeah. be fed. And it's not like now you've opened some really trendy, cool New York yeah. restaurants that people want to be seen at. People want to like do Instagram posts oh, yeah. that. You know, like it's really... Yeah. No, everything about high. it looks and feels just like Anixi. a regular... Yeah. Anixi, Anixi last year, like, um, that I opened last year uh, in February was... Uh, was the catalyst for mm. the big, big change. Because uh, I took a risk. I, I I took a very fancy place. Uh, if you guys get a chance, go. It's a Mediterranean restaurant. Everything is marble, bougie, uh, yeah. velvet, mm -hmm. the curtains, uh, gold everywhere. Yeah. The, the whole, the whole, yeah, yeah. 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 You know? Uh, and anything I, I, I wanted I wanted <laughs> to bougie. I wanted to make a statement. You know, I wanted to say hey. So that's your Mediterranean yeah. concept. Yeah. And that's named what? Anixi. Uh, Anixi. Anixi. And Anixi. where's that one located? It's on twenty four and eighth Avenue, between twenty four and twenty five. Mm -hmm. Uh it was a few uh things before that. Uh, it was a gay club uh, at one point called Rome. It was a pizzeria at one point, uh too fancy for a pizzeria. Yeah. Uh but we took it at the end of the pandemic, so... So did that come February after the shift in Beyond Sushi during the pandemic, or what was the progression yeah, of all so, your restaurants? So you so, had so Beyond Sushi. Beyond Sushi, I had seven. Pandemic hits, 125 employees. I go to six employees mm -hmm. from wow. 125. Yeah. Closed all the restaurants except the Upper East Side. I which, would order there from their I'm weekly. Sorry. No, I ordered from the yeah. Upper East Side every week. Thank you. Um, during the pandemic to support you guys. Thank you. And like, yeah. Uh, yeah, we closed, we closed that one, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> oh. Yeah, in December. So uh, made a decision during the pandemic to change course. I think that the pause, I went full speed, 80 years, yeah. uh, without thinking, just like going, going, this is the mission, this is what we're doing, this, we're going to open, da, 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 yeah. funding, Shark Tank, all this stuff going on. Um, and then the pause in the pandemic, the back against the wall, uh, which I thrive in, and I, I, I like that, I put myself in that situation so many times. Um, back against the wall, I had to do something, and I made a decision that in November 2020, there's nothing in the street, not even a cats, okay? Everybody's yeah. scared of corona. I went and I signed for another one. Uh, and I signed for Willow. So that's my first off brand that mm -hmm. I opened. Again, no employees, built it. Um, and what kind of food is Willow? Willow is American Bistro. Okay. So and that's I just on 8th to, Avenue? On 8th Avenue and 20th Street. Mm -hmm. Got a great deal, uh, restaurant that went out, whatever, whatever. Um, in the middle of the pandemic, trying to build a restaurant, no one is allowed to sit inside either. Uh, can find a contractor, <laughs> open my own construction company. <laughs> <laughs> people think I'm, like, when I say that, people think I, like, lost it. But I built all the restaurants since then. Yeah. Like, we built our own restaurants. Uh, part of the company now. It's a division. But did that, open the restaurant, first day, no seating, line down the street. Beautiful. I, th I, th I think that everybody was looking for something to be excited about. Absolutely. It was nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everybody lying down the street. I'm cooking with uh, a broken leg on the line <laughs> that, I, that I broke right before we opened the restaurant. And 
people are waiting an hour to get their food. It was crazy opening. I didn't understand that that's what's going to happen. Uh, first opening, ran that for a year, uh, found another deal during Omicron. Opened Colera. Colera is my Italian place on 3rd Avenue between 26 and 27. Great hit. Learned a lot of lessons from there. Uh, looks for places. Found the Nixie. The Nixie was shut for four years. It was dusty, nasty. Uh, the whole downstairs, I had to gut it, put a whole thing new. Uh, big, big operation. 135 seats uh, in the restaurants, plus a bar. <sighs> big kitchen, big menu, totally different ball game. Uh, brought a, another team together, opened that in February of 2023. Mm -hmm. um, set up a bunch of stuff during that time. Fixed uh, Willow, fixed Coletta again, fixed the teams, uh, yeah. organized. Things started to move around, uh, to, to move in the right direction. You utilize, I self-fund everything. Mm -hmm. So the company is what drives the company for the future. I don't uh, take liabilities from outside. So we opened that, and then that drove the next one. And now Anix is driving the driving uh, Siete. And I signed yesterday for another one that will open in Union Square, bigger than Anix. What's, uh, what's, what's, what's the next yeah. cuisine? What are we going after next? Uh, we're going to do a Spanish-French uh, infusion. Okay. Uh, small plates. Two-floor restaurant, beautiful skylight, uh, private room for, like, parties, bar, uh, nice, beautiful. On the bottom, right on Union Square, part of the menu is going to be from the from the market from Union Square. So oh, there's wow. going to be two portions of the menu, one from there, one from there. Um, how many how do you envision doing? How many concepts? So there is a goal uh, business-wise. business, business -wise. Now it's just business. I, I do all the numbers for the company. I'm the mm -hmm. CFO. Uh, so business wise, <laughs> really? Yeah. God, anything else you could be doing? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you have to. It, it's easier. It's connected. How do you have this many? I, I, I was exhausted I just day. coming here. Today. I was like, wait, what does your <laughs> wife do you. now? My wife does all the uh, all the marketing and design <laughs> and all that stuff. Uh, all right. That's the fun stuff. Yeah. No, she does a lot of work, and that's she takes too, yeah. she takes care of three kids. Without oh, her, I can't do any of that. Right. Uh, but I. On a side note, I believe that responsibility is meaning, uh, so I take on a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's my, it's my. But I, part of it is building the team. So I, I am mm. the CFO, but I have a team that puts all the numbers together right. and does everything for me. I make the decisions, do a little bit of wrecking and stuff like that. Not, right. Not nothing crazy. Um, but the planning, I do there, and the connection between the numbers and the operations is what helps me uh, make those decisions. Of right. What What is actually going to work? What's not going to work? How much am I planning? Uh, Got to reach a certain point. There is a there's a sweet spot in mm -hmm. restaurants in terms of how the business operates, what it brings in, and where where you can still fuel drive right uh, drive more things afterwards or take profits or whatever. Not. Right. Um, I gotta think. There's. I mean, I don't know. I just it's a grandmaster plan. Well, I'm assuming. Look at this glint in his eye. And he's yeah. a mad yeah. scientist. Is there are there plans for for other cities? Yeah, I mean, there's Come no... Come to Jersey City, please. <laughs> well, I was not, like not, so LA. Close. not so close. Oh, I well, you no, should. LA, LA, I, had a, I, had a, I had a stint in on Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. uh, I got an investment, wow, in 2018, before we, this whole thing started. Right. Uh, and from which shark? From Lori Grenier. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and Matt Higgins, he's the... He uh, was a guest shark. But anyway, got an investment from them. Ended up uh, spending seven months talking to them, negotiating and dropping it. Right. Um, which I'm happy I did because it would take me in a different direction. Right. The, the goal was to go to L.A. And that's why I brought it up. The goal was to go to L.A., open Beyond Sushi's over there. Mm -hmm. um, but thank God I didn't. If I anywhere, I'll stay on the East Coast. Okay. I have a lot of requests to go all down. Up and down the East Coast. I mean, yeah. Jersey places. City, I'm telling you, there's so many vegan moms. It's not coming to Jersey yeah. City. You need to come. There's a no. I live there. Yeah. I live there for a yeah, second. Yeah, but now it's, it's enough. different. Yeah, I know. I mean, Manhattan is where I'm staying. Yeah. I might do Williamsburg, but we're set up to do it. I mean, the system, the global system right. uh, that we have, because they're all attached together. Yeah. I have a, I have a small not small, 7,000 square feet kitchen where mm. I produce a lot of stuff for the restaurants Yeah, uh, that I operate with a team that does all the logistics and all that. Uh, so we're set to do anywhere uh, along the East Coast uh, if we wanted to. Right. Um, I like touching. Like, 
I'm not a control freak. I let I let go. I let people do their job. Yeah. But I like touching my food. Mm -hmm. That means that there is a lot of chefs that put their name and would say, oh, that's the mm -hmm. Naomi. Mm -hmm. Gordon Ramsay chefs. opened yeah. a restaurant yeah. over there. Yeah. Okay. He's never been there. He's been there once. Uh, part of the reason why I closed the Upper East Side, it was too far for me to drive there every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so my restaurants are in proximity and I have a route that I do all the time. I have I to touch I would check it. on Beyond Sushi or any of your restaurants in Jersey City daily for you, just saying. Sounds good. But that's, okay. that's something people... Partnering, partnering. <laughs> partnering. That's, you're not exaggerating that. There there are chefs, not just Gordon Ramsay, but a lot, a lot of Dave big... Gordon! Lot, yeah. A lot of big name chefs open a lot of... You know, you'll see they have 30, yeah. 40, 50 yeah. Yeah, okay. restaurants. And in their contracts in those restaurants, they have to literally show up one time a year and make an appearance. And they don't even like they don't it. even own they they have their licensing name. their name. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't want to be that. Right. That's not why I got into cooking. So if we're eating one of your restaurants, I've been there. Your and fingerprints are all over all every over. day. But that you, team, the 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 people, I, I've been there in the week that you came there at least three times. And to Steve. recap, I'm sorry, but to recap, you started Beyond Sushi with one employee. One employee. And now you have 250? Yeah, 260. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So and that's, that's, I think it goes up and down because it's a restaurant business, and but like, right, of course. that's where we're at. So do you have like uh, a sous chef or someone you bounce ideas off of? Yeah, so my, like... my, my chef team, I have uh, two in the upper three. Uh, I have a guy that I've been working with for, he worked for my dad, uh, working forever with me. The uh, rabbi? 20, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, 27 years in, in, in the family with us. Uh, wow. uh, his name is Orlando. He runs my operations in the kitchen. He knows exactly. I work hand in hand with him forever. And then I have a chef de cuisine, a Mario Bucciolati, which is a, a, a vegan chef from the city, known, uh, and does... Uh, does all recipe development, uh, helps with the, with the operations. Each restaurant has its own chef, the mm -hmm. head chef that runs the restaurant itself. And then I have a pastry executive chef. Uh, uh, her name is uh, Susie Berta, and she runs all my all my pastry, yeah. all, all R&D for pastry, all the desserts, all the breads, all the... Uh, you know, whatever, it, whatever is in, the, in that world. And of course, they all have teams, uh, sous chefs, very familiar system for me. It's like uh, it's like the army, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. it's brigades and and it's easier for me to manage that way. But how does it work when you create a menu? Like, do you have a specific? Is it just these people that you create it with? Are you on your own? Do you bring in people with good palates? Because I have a good palate. No, oh, yeah. Well, we'll invite you for the friends and family. <laughs> uh, we we the way we create is uh, is they me and them sit down bounce ideas, create it. The way I used to do it was very weird. I would write the menu uh, and not test it. And mm -hmm. they they like to test their stuff. I like to go and I, I see the value of what people say more than what I think about the food. Right. So what, the way I did a Nixie is I never tried the menu. I just wrote it and then I went in the kitchen, cooked it with the team. Served it. Served it to friends and family. So basically, I would test it on them, right? Uh, the bread didn't come out great. This didn't come out right. great. Okay, the next day. And I would do that for like five, six days. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing in the Mexican place. And I would ad adjust on the fly, right? You got to be agile. Get feedback. Okay, boom, 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 boom. You got to change it. Uh, and that's how I would build my menus. Test it real time, real feedback. Not what you think. I mean... Who cares? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who cares what I think about it? Right. I mean, if you, if they're not going to pay for it, so who cares? Was there one dish that you thought you had a, a home run with? This is the best thing I've made, and it just got routinely rejected. You were shocked that it got rejected, thrown out by the, by the <laughs> audience? Uh, yeah, more than once. Yeah. More than once. Um, How long do you hold on to it before you just let it go? <laughs> oh, I'm quick. Quick? Uh, I don't Go straight behind the board. That's it. You, know, that's so you, it. Don't, you don't I get hung up on it. No, and, and I read, yes. like, I read religiously i read reviews right? right so i'll read what people say and i don't care about the good ones right yeah of course i, I don't care that and i try not to read them because that just feeds my ego right i'd rather read the bad ones i always say if i just wanted to hear good things i'd ask my mother what she thought that's right but otherwise you know so i i probably i agree just you learn read all the, all the and that's how i maintain a lot of control over what's going on because customers will never lie to you no. They, they'll say the truth. They'll say what happened. Sometimes they will exaggerate, right. which is fine. Uh, but you look for patterns. Yeah. Patterns in life dictate everything. You look for the pattern on the food. Is the plate coming back? Are they finishing the plate? Right. When I stand in the dining room, I people think I look at 
I look at the food. I look how much they eat. Right. I look at their nods. I look at how how they react to every bite. Mm-hmm. You know, did they finish it? Was it slower? How they ate it at the end of the dish? Is it too much? Right. Is too little? Um, yeah, I try to analyze people as much as I can. Yeah, that, that's smart. And so, what's you're a young man. You've done a lot. I mean, <laughs> probably, 40. 40. 40? Yeah. I mean, it, you're a young man. You're much yeah. younger than I am. So, no way. Yeah, I'm almost okay. 40. I look older. That's all. Well, it's, yeah. you're working a lot harder, to be, yeah. to be fair. So, I'm sure you've had to have had at this point television producers come to you and talk to you about doing stuff on TV or people listening. He's a very handsome man. You should know also. Uh, Uh, Very successful, very handsome. So there has to be, there has to have been some of that, or is that something you're interested in doing? Because you have a lot of years left here. I've done, I've done, I've done a little bit. Most of it was, uh, was like morning shows and, uh, I mean like your own thing, like your own show. I, oh, okay. So (laughs) I, for a very long time, tried to stay away from, from, TV, mm-hmm. camera, yeah, uh, podcasts, mm-hmm. uh, uh, social media. I like my to being. I like the being anonymous. Right, right. There's a there's a thing about that. Yeah. Um, part of the growth in uh, the pandemic was to learn that even though I like it yeah. and I might want to choose to be that uh, for myself. I have no choice uh, when it comes to the business, and I have to. I had to give up that choice and and learn how to, not learn, but be in front of the camera. I knew how to do it. I, I, uh, it comes easy to me. Right. Uh, it always has has come easy to me. In the last two years, I've invested a lot into social media, right. into putting videos out, into into the team. I have a full time. Uh, you know, content creator runs around me with a camera and yeah. uh, drives me nuts every day. Let's do this. Let's do that. I only give him one take, and that's all I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we do. We do that. We do that. I have on that team. I have four people. I probably invest. Uh, I don't know what over a quarter million dollars into that yeah. stuff. It's extremely important. Right. I've learned how to use it, and I've learned how much value it gives to the business. Right. I don't advertise. I don't do other things. But TV, uh, podcasts, uh, right. I put it as a mission for me to actually practice this. Because the first one I did was horrible. Yeah. I went and listened to it, and I, I, I couldn't listen to myself. Yeah. Um, it's practice, and, 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 and it worked really well for the company and for me personally. Right. Do I um, do I enjoy that I can't do certain things uh, uh, even down the street sometimes uh, without people like looking? Yeah. Uh, no, and I, it happens to me. Like they'll stop me right outside the restaurant. People yeah. will see me. I'm not some celebrity or anything like that, but still, it's like something that I even after Gordon Ramsay, even after I didn't, I didn't enjoy because I wanted to. So you just want you want to cook you want to do your restaurant. So. Yeah, I mean I would do it. I would do it if, so if there was a chance. So they you like Hell's Kitchen vegan. Yeah, I would. and you're gonna be Gordon. You'll do it. Oh yeah. All right, hear that? I'll Netflix? be better. I would like host it with him. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, I have a question about the environment of what it's like to work in the kitchen because one thing yeah. I feel like we haven't touched on is like how yeah. much hard work it is yeah. and how much organization it is. Like when I used to I waitressed yeah. years ago for two major. New York restaurants. Nice. So I have seen. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I've yeah. seen what you chefs it's go not through. As, it's not as bad as it used to be, though. It's, it's not? definitely been cleaned okay. up. Okay. Not, not, not in the sense that it's not as bad or it's not as uh, aggressive. In, aggressive. Like because yeah. I used to hear so there's much certain things that I that, so there's much. certain things that I can't. I I mean I first of all I'm older and I, when I was younger maybe I could have been like this wildcat and do whatever and it was acceptable too. Uh, it's not as acceptable, first of all. Uh, and also, you realize that it's not good for the team. I take right. a different approach. Um, I let go of people. Mm-hmm. And when I see that there is no future for us to work together, not because of I'll try, right. I'll help, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll coach. I think that's the one of the most fun things for me to do is to coach people how to get better at what they do. But if I don't see a will or a dedication, I won't do it. But if I do, I'll do above and beyond. My director of operation, administrative assistant, seven years ago. My uh, regional manager, a waitress. 
my head chef for three restaurants, dishwasher seven years ago. Yeah. Wow. All of that is, but they have the will. They have mm-hmm. the, they want, mm-hmm. I'll coach, I'll help you, how to deal with people, all that stuff. But if you don't have it, right. I'm like, okay. And is your you. team made up of people from all over the world? Like oh, yeah. a lot of, yeah, that's one of the great things <laughs> so, about. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Uh, you know, South, uh, West Africa, mm-hmm. uh, South America, Central Europe, uh, here, of yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, you know, all over the place. Wow. Chef, like, thank place. you for having me for being here. I don't want to, I could talk for another hour yeah, about this me stuff. Too. It's fascinating. I love thank everything. Thank you. No, thank you for having me. Uh, we have a few questions about New York City specifically to get yeah. to you, mm-hmm. but real quick, let's recap. If you can run them real quick for everybody listening, the restaurants, yes. what cuisine we're dealing with, where they can get it. And maybe so, one cuisine to try from each restaurant, like if we should pick one thing off the menu. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Beyond Sushi uh, has been around forever, 37th Street and 7th Avenue, 56th and 6th Avenue, two location. Um, one thing to try for sure is the chicken bao. Okay. Uh, I love that with the goo sauce. I love the sauce. Okay, yeah. nice, nice. <laughs> Thank you very much for Your being Your ponzu sauce is... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Willow uh, on 8th Avenue and uh, 20th Street. Uh, fun, uh, casual uh, American bistro. Uh, one thing to try is probably a smash burger. Amazing with a sunny side egg on top, mm. avocado, chipotle sauce. Might to go to sandwich over there. Uh, Coletta uh, on Third Avenue between 26 and 27. Uh, pastas for sure, pizzas for sure, everything made from scratch. Uh, very cozy, date-like place. Uh, I would try the carbonara. Anixi, Anixi, uh, my biggest one, 130 seats. Uh, very fancy, uh, cool uh, place, nice vibe. Uh, on 8th Avenue between 24 and 25. Uh, really cool scene inside just to see the space is amazing. Uh, all the stuff was reclaimed from a hotel downtown. Everything was handmade in the 1800s. Wow. wow. Really cool stuff built by the landlord uh, before I got there. Nice. Um, and uh, over there, try the chicken kebabs. Uh, the, all the kebabs come on like this sword skewers, uh, really playing on the idea that it's vegan, not vegan, the right. whole thing. Uh, really good stuff. And then the last one, and the one I work in almost every day for the past three weeks, is Siete, a Mexican restaurant um, on 19th Street between 5 and 6. A beautiful younger crowd, uh, cool music. Uh, and then we have a beautiful bar uh, selection of mezcals and tequilas uh, from all over. And one thing to try for sure is the fish tacos made from banana blossoms, uh, marinated in wakame, and then uh, fried with a beer batter. Really good stuff. That sounds delicious. Yeah. Wow. It all sounds delicious. Yeah. Mm. Even for a carnivore <laughs> like myself. Nice. Not so, for much longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to yeah. try all of them. They all yeah, sound comfort. great. They look great. You guys let me know when you're there. I, uh, yeah. Make sure I'll stop by and take care of you. Oh, that'd be great, Jeff. Thank, Thank take, you. You took care of us just coming yeah, in here lovely. today. So you've Maybe. been in New York for about 20-something years, years now. Maybe 19, years. 19 yeah. almost 20 years. So let's see if you got some favorite New York City things okay. at this point. I mean, Sounds you're so busy. Good. He doesn't watch TV. I know, I, mean, I know. I asked ridiculous. before he came in. Yeah, like, I know. I, 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 I got it. You got time okay. to go to the movies. All right. Yeah. So favorite movie set in New York City? Um, I think Long Island City. They set up right outside my kitchen every uh, Haddad. You know, those trucks that mm-hmm. they yeah, set yeah. up right outside. Mm-hmm. They do a lot of the scenes under the bridge, the the, the subway bridge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that embodies old New York, like rusty, oh, yeah. raggedy. Yeah. So anywhere that they, they film like that uh, reminds me, at least of my childhood, seeing movies right. of New York. Yeah. yeah. Is that just that's, that scenery? Yeah, that, that scenery. That's you know, favorite. hearing that subway running up on yeah. top, mm-hmm. that's New York for me. Yeah, absolutely. And- is that the same for a TV show, or do you have a favorite New York-based TV show? Uh, TV show, not really. Yeah, not really. Okay, so I, I mean, I'm, in, I I'm into movies. Don't get yeah. me wrong. No, no. Just need to find time. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, favorite? You have a favorite musician or band that came out of New York? I came out of New York. Uh, I used to be a diehard Nas, okay, a rapper. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, uh, and I think that. 
coming here and you know seeing uh, 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 over the bridge uh, the projects and driving by that 21st mm -hmm. Street every day, seeing his picture up on the wall, uh, hearing all the stories about that area, um, you know, seeing it in real life. You know, That's a good it, one. Made it a big one. Yeah. Yeah. And that you have a favorite song. Is it, would a favorite song about New York be from from Nas or? Oh, I think that uh, I think that uh, Alicia Keys and Jay Jay Z mm -hmm. put yeah. put up whatever everything that embodies the city, you know, in that song. And I think mm -hmm. that it's an icon for for what New York is. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. See, oh, well, this is a good question for our chef. What's your favorite food in New York, in New York City? Um, Not one of yours. Before, before I was, uh, before I became vegan or after. Uh, uh, let's, well, I guess let's go both. both. What would the carnivore you want to eat here in New York? My carnivore, I, I, I worked in clubs for many years before I, uh, before I started working, like with my dad, and I worked in the weekends, and I did the door for a while, um, and I think that. Uh, 4 a.m. pepperoni pizza was always like, <laughs> <laughs> like my thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't do the egg and cheese and nah. bacon egg and cheese. I didn't do that, but a pepperoni at 4 a.m. after a nice uh, night of drinking yeah. was always like a, a set thing. After I became vegan, um, there was a restaurant called Nick's uh, that opened on University mm -hmm, Street mm -hmm. and closed. It was uh, Michelin Star, right? Was it? Uh, it was not a Michelin star, oh. but the chef was a Michelin oh, star that's right. and dovetail uptown. Gotcha. Uh, and he was very much veg forward. Uh, one of his dishes uh, really stuck and like inspired me. And I, I love Nick's. And I knew it before it became Nick's and the way they utilized the tools that they had. They had a uh, Indian uh, bread. Uh, how do you call them? Papadon? non bread. Yeah, but the, the 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 actual the actual uh the actual equipment to, to oh, cook in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. they they used it in a very cool way in their in their cooking. I really appreciate it that okay. they they used whatever they have, and I love that restaurant, at least for the few times that I was there before yeah. it closed. Yeah, so. yeah, it was good. All right, Emily's favorite question: uh, Do you have a favorite season oh, in New York City? Uh I like it in the spring. Mm. Summer, uh, it boils all the all the nasty things in the <laughs> from the yeah. subway, and everything smells oh, like. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> if you are in the city, I'm not saying Central Park, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and like going on the walks by the water, that's pretty. Yeah, but if you're in the city, like on 37th Street, where my restaurant is, all the urine and everything boils yeah. up, and it's, it's like it's I, I can't, I can't do that. Is yeah. there is there a season just to Veer off a tiny bit. That's busiest for you and for us in the restaurants. Yeah, uh, the two months that are most busy is uh, May and December. Oh, interesting. Uh, and it depends which restaurant. So, Beyond Sushi is on the lighter side. So mm -hmm. July, August is my better months. Okay. Uh, Coletta, Nixie is more of like a hearty, uh, you know, uh, cozy places. So they're busier on the colder months. Um, last month, March was the best month that Nixie ever did. So. I don't know. Hardier. Uh, yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. It's different. And then uh, two more, and we'll get you out of here again. Sure. Thank you so much for being here. Come on. Do you have a favorite New York-based charity that you support or that we could give a shout-out to? Uh, not New York City-based. Uh, we support a few uh, uh, um, animal sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. uh, Woodstock, uh, up upstate. Uh, I've went there, did uh, collaborations, classes that uh, oh, wow. promote them. Support and Feed was another one during the pandemic that we that we collaborated. They're out of L.A., but they did a lot of work in New York during the pandemic. Uh, made a lot of food for uh, doctors and uh, mm -hmm. so on and so on. All right. Yeah. We'll add that to the website and people check those out. Yeah. yeah. And then last question, closest near-death experience oh, in New York City. In New York City. Yeah. yeah. Out of New York City, I had a bunch. Yeah, oh. sure. <laughs> uh, in New York City, on 14th Street, one day I was walking down the street and a tree branch the size of like two cars collapsed. And as I was walking, it fell right behind me. And oh everybody gosh. turned around, stopped in the middle of the street, stopped all the traffic, right? Uh, and I felt like I was lucky that day. 
Of all, yeah, wow. Every, there's so many stories people yeah. going. You know, that's yeah, it's a new. That I mean, car is always yeah. like left yeah. and right, uh, but that was like a special one because yeah. I think that uh, it doesn't happen often. Uh, well, again, Chef, thank wow. you. It's such an yeah, honor yeah, to have you. Thank you so much. It's an you. amazing. Story. I think that, as you said, th- people are going to get more into vegan eating, yeah. vegetarian eating. Yeah. I think you're in the forefront as a pioneer here. Thank and you. I think Absolutely. in 10 or 15 years, we're going to look back at this interview and other things you're doing. So and go, oh, right, that, like, it's, it's going to be so explosive, I think, over the next 10, 15 years, and you're such yeah. a big part of it. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you for letting me Thank speak you for about being my experiences. Here. No, it's been an honor. And how do people it. find you on social media? Uh, Chef Guy Vaknin on uh, Instagram. All our restaurants uh, on Instagram are there. City Roots is our uh, hospitality company that uh, houses all of it. So City Roots NYC is uh, the handle. But we do a lot on Instagram. That's where everybody finds us. Wonderful. Appreciate Great. it, guys. Great. Thank, you, Thank so you very much for having me. Yes, and thanks everyone for listening. Until next time, I'm your co-host, Eric Wickstrom. I'm your co-host, Emily Eden. Don't forget to follow us on social media and check out our scripted series, FUNYC. And check us out, FUNYCpod.com. You can find out information about all of the charities we talked about today and other yep. local places you can support. And uh, go go drag go drag someone to a vegan restaurant. Absolutely. You might, sure. just, you might just like it. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. Hey.